Disney has joined forces with IMAX to stream IMAX enhanced content from their Disney Plus service. But what does IMAX enhanced mean besides some fancy new badges on menus? Isn't IMAX supposed to be the best as is? In this video, I've got exclusive statements from IMAX and DTS about what makes IMAX Enhance stand out from other certifications. There are a couple of things to know when talking about IMAX. First, let's go over the sound of IMAX Enhanced. It's impossible to replicate IMAX sound at home for the simple fact that you can't buy their speakers and most of us probably can't afford the at-home IMAX version. To bring home the big sound of a movie theater, IMAX teamed up with digital theater systems commonly called DTS. So if you have an IMAX certified receiver, um, uh, not necessarily speakers or anything like that, but let's say you have the speaker, it goes off and turns off all the external processing, like uh, uh, any room environments, like a lot of the uh, manufacturers have their own customized room environments, like church and large hall and, and big band and things like that. You know, that might be cool for listening to music and so on, but you really don't want it if you're watching a movie. You want to listen to exactly what was put on the disc. So that's one of the things the IMAX flag does when the receiver sees it, is it turns off all that external processing, leaves your B chain, so it leaves all the equalization and level setting that you might have done to make your room correct. Um, and then in addition to that, it turns on the additional filters that create the IMAX base, and, uh, base management system. So in the theater, IMAX doesn't have a discrete LFE channel. Everything is done with base management. So uh, uh, in the origins of IMAX, you know, if you're going back to the mid 70s, the only way of delivering a film to something that big was on 35 millimeter magnetic film. And that had six tracks of audio. So what they did was they made a five channel system. So it was left, center, right, left, surround, right, surround, just like 5.1, but they didn't do the 5.1 because the screen was so big and a lot of them were dome shaped. They put a speaker up on the ceiling. So it's actually above the screen. So it's uh, what they call the high center or the voice of God speaker. So that was the six channel. So now that you don't have an extra channel for the discrete low frequency sounds, uh, what they did was they did base management. So they have their own custom formula that they do for all the channels and how it actually creates that subwoofer. And then what we do on the front end when we get any IMAX material is we do part of that filtration. Um, so we do some of the filtering and some of the processing to put it onto the final master. So when you get a disc or when you watch it on streaming, there is in fact a discrete subwoofer because we've already done that part for you. So it's actually there. That way, if someone watches an IMAX thing, they're not just completely missing a subwoofer if they don't have an IMAX piece of, uh, uh, of hardware. But what we do is we do it so that it's compatible with normal 5.1 systems. But then when it sees an IMAX receiver, it does the rest of the filtration and actually you gain some headroom. So now instead of 20 dB of headroom on your LFE, you actually have 23 dB. So we give you a little bit more headroom. So it's sort of that IMAX sound. If you've got a big subwoofer in a big system at home, it allows you to do that. Um, and it also gives you some room to move uh, because of where the filters are set to do base management the way you might want to do it as well at home. So some people have really big main channels, like their left, center, and right are really big. Some people have like, you know, the 5.1 system in a box, you know, where you have the little tiny left, center, right, but a pretty big subwoofer. So the way we've done it sort of allows for both of those kinds of systems to work properly, whether or not you have an IMAX piece of gear. But if you do have the IMAX piece of gear, then you get the extended headroom, you get the additional filter sets, um, and you get the proper uh, uh, down mixing. So uh, uh, if you have a 12.0 IMAX track, it knows where to put the tracks properly, so it mimics an IMAX theater properly, and all that's sort of done for you in the IMAX processor. Something to note is that IMAX Enhanced has actually been around for a couple of years now. In January 2019, IMAX teamed up with Fandango to stream IMAX Enhanced movies on Fandango Now. The difference back then was that IMAX Enhanced products did not have the taller aspect ratio. The visuals had some grain reduction, color correction, and newer audio tracks done by DTS. 
The second thing to keep in mind about IMAX Enhanced and the item most people will notice right away are the visuals. When you're talking about IMAX, most people think you're referring to the traditional film viewing experience. This entails the gigantic screens that average 80 feet tall with the very square looking movies. How can Disney pack that into your television? Let's be clear, legacy IMAX screens are huge because IMAX film records at a whopping 18K. In a statement, IMAX told me, there's at least 18K worth of resolution on IMAX film negatives. That's more than any digital camera today can capture, and broadly speaking, the standard can range based on the film and theater. If a film is shot in IMAX film format, the film negative is scanned in at 8K resolution at IMAX, and then it's typically finished in 4K to 6K resolution. Most digital films today, however, are finished at 4K, and a lot are still finished at 2K. If a film is shot in digital in 6K or 8K, it's also often challenging to finish visual effects in time at 4K due to budgetary and timing constraints. What we get with IMAX Enhance is not usually not going to be this. It's by and large going to be IMAX Digital. Several years ago, IMAX teamed up with several camera manufacturers such as Arri to certify their cameras as IMAX Digital cameras. These cameras average around 7K but their aspect ratios are much taller than a traditional movie camera. This taller image is still not as tall as IMAX film cameras, but it is expanded more than a traditional camera. This is why IMAX advertises certain movies with the catchphrase, see up to 26% more in IMAX. If you want to know more about aspect ratios, check out this video I made explaining the different types of aspect ratios and their history and why they exist after this video in the description below. Now, because of the taller image, your television is going to show more visuals on it when showing something that was shot in IMAX Enhanced, if streaming off Disney+. Previously, these taller images had been cropped for home viewing to give a consistent black bar look with the entirety of the movie. Suffice to say, in today's movie environment, your mind is conditioned to believe that the ultimate cinema experience starts with black bars on the top and bottom. This is mainly because of the way the movie is recorded. Filmmakers intentionally use cameras and lenses that capture a very wide image. IMAX Enhance sets to bridge what you see in an IMAX auditorium to your living room by giving consumers the original aspect ratio that was shot in the environment and shown in movie theaters alongside a beefier sound mix. Not all scenes will have the expanded image. This is because of the associated cost with using these IMAX certified cameras and the cost of going the extra mile for the special effects that's in frame. As of right now, Infinity War and Endgame are the only two movies that have been shot entirely using IMAX digital cameras. No movie has ever been shot entirely in IMAX film, although Dunkirk and Tenet have come close. Just to be clear, there's nothing extra you have to do to set up your equipment to play content that is certified IMAX Enhance. Just hit the play button like you always do, and your system will play the content. The TV sees the IMAX, IMAX Enhance flag, it turns off all the external processing and sets it to its optimal settings that were meant to be uh, done for the IMAX mastering process. So in theory and in practice, if you were to put in an IMAX disc or play an IMAX streaming thing, it should tell the TV what settings it should have. Now, of course, it's not going to affect things like your LED brightness or anything like that, the things that are sort of normal to your viewing environment, but, uh, but it will turn off all the stuff that'll make it look like a soap opera and other things. One of the advantages of IMAX Enhanced is um, uh, obviously there is a benefit to having the IMAX certified equipment but there's also no downside to not having it. So if you don't have an IMAX certified uh, piece of equipment, you still get the advantage of the noise reduction, you still get the advantage of the, uh, uh, the mastering process, you still get the advantage of the HDR10, uh, high dynamic range, color palette, and everything else that goes along with it. Um, but if you have the, um, uh, the certified equipment, obviously the TV's been certified to have the right specifications for that. To get more specifics on this, head over to IMAX's FAQ section. Let me know in the comment section below your thoughts on IMAX Enhance. This is Movie University, education in cinema.